Imagine this. Jane, always the life of the party, brings home Tom, a homeless man she's fallen in love with. Her friends and family are shocked, whispering behind her back, judging her every move. But one night, after months of judgment, Jane finally gathers everyone in the room and says, I think it's time you all know why Tom and I got married. What she reveals next leaves everyone in stunned silence. Her parents, who had laughed and doubted her decision, are left speechless. What could this secret be? But. Hey. Before we dive into the story, do yourself a favor and pause the video right now. Go hit that like button and let's see if we can make this video reach 1000 likes. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to your favorite story channel. Also make sure to ring the notification bell, so you never miss out on the latest and weirdest stories. Trust us, you won't want to miss what's coming your way. Now, sit back, relax, and prepare to be amazed as we take you on an unforgettable ride. Don't forget to engage with us in the comments below. We love hearing from you, without further ado, let's dive right in. Jane had always been the center of every gathering. Her laugh was infectious, her energy bright and captivating. Everyone she met fell for her lively spirit, her charm, and her endless optimism. Parties, dinners, and social events weren't complete without her, and she thrived on being surrounded by friends, family, and good conversation, but beneath the surface, Jane had always been more than just the life of the party. She had a heart that yearned for deeper connections, for meaning beyond the sparkle of social events. It was on one of those nights, walking home after a particularly eventful dinner with friends, that Jane's life changed forever. The air was cold and she hugged her coat tighter around her body as she passed a row of shops on a dimly lit street, her mind drifted, thinking about the laughter and conversations from earlier when she noticed a figure sitting alone near the corner of an old building. His clothes were ragged, and his face was hidden beneath the shadow of a worn-out cap. Jane slowed her steps. Her curiosity peaked, something about him seemed different from the usual homeless people she had seen around the city. Maybe it was the way he sat. Not slouched in defeat, but upright. Almost as though he was guarding a piece of dignity that had yet to be stolen by the streets. Jane hesitated for a moment but then, as was her nature, she approached him. Hey, she said softly, offering a warm smile. Do you need anything? Something to eat? The man looked up slowly and Jane's breath caught his eyes, though weary, held a depth of sadness and intelligence that she hadn't expected. He nodded once, almost reluctantly. I don't need much, he said, his voice gravelly, as if he hadn't spoken in a long time. But thank you. Jane didn't hesitate. She ducked into a nearby deli grabbing a sandwich and a bottle of water before returning to him, she sat beside him on the cold pavement and handed him the food. He accepted it with a small nod, but didn't eat right away. Instead, they sat there in silence, the city's noise humming in the background. Two strangers in a moment of unexpected connection. What's your name? Jane asked after a while, Tom. He replied simply, not offering anything more. Jane nodded. I'm Jane. It's nice to meet you, Tom. He didn't respond, but she could tell he appreciated her company. Over the next few weeks, Jane found herself thinking about Tom often. She started to look for him on her way home. And every time she passed that corner, there he was, their conversations were brief at first, with Jane doing most of the talking and Tom answering in short sentences. But slowly, something changed. Tom began to open up little by little, and Jane found herself wanting to know more about this man whose life had somehow taken such a tragic turn. As the weeks passed, Tom's story unfolded that he wasn't always homeless, far from it. Tom had once been a successful entrepreneur running a tech startup that had garnered attention and admiration in the business world. 
He was on the fast track to becoming a well-known name in the industry, with investors eager to back his ideas, and colleagues who respected his vision. Life, for a time, had been good but as is often the case, success came with its own set of challenges. Tom trusted people who didn't have his best interests at heart, and before he knew it, the company he had built was slipping out of his control. A series of bad deals, some financial mismanagement, and the betrayal of his closest partners led to the downfall of everything he had worked for. Tom lost his business, his home, and soon after, his entire life began to crumble. As he spoke, Jane listened intently, her heart breaking for him. She couldn't imagine what it must have been like to lose everything, to fall from such heights and land in the gutter. Tom's story was one of resilience though. Despite everything, he had survived. He hadn't given up, even though life had taken everything from him. And that Jane realized was what drew her to him, there was something about Tom's quiet strength, his refusal to let the world break him completely that resonated with her. They continued to meet at the same spot every night, and soon their friendship deepened. Jane brought him food, clothes, and blankets, but more importantly, she brought conversation. She treated him like a person, not a charity case, and for the first time in a long time, Tom felt seen that he felt valued. One cold evening, months after they had first met, Tom looked at Jane differently. His guarded expression softened, and for the first time, Jane saw hope flicker in his eyes. Jane, he began, his voice low and hesitant, I don't know how to thank you for everything you've done for me. Jane shook her head, you don't have to thank me, Tom, I'm just glad we met. Tom smiled, a small, tentative smile that spoke volumes. I never thought I'd feel this way again, he admitted. You've given me something I haven't had in a long time, hope. It was then that Jane realized she had fallen in love with him. It wasn't a sudden realization, but a gradual awareness that had grown over time, Tom, despite his circumstances, was everything she admired in a person. He was kind, thoughtful, and resilient. His heart was big, even though life had tried to shrink it, and Jane knew, without a doubt, that she wanted to be with him. But when Jane introduced Tom to her family, things didn't go as smoothly as she had hoped. Her parents were horrified, her friends, the ones who had always admired her for her taste and elegance, couldn't understand why she would choose to be with someone like Tom. Someone who had nothing to offer her. Or so they thought. Jane's mother in particular was relentless in her disapproval. You can't be serious, Jane, she said one evening after Jane had invited Tom over for dinner, her. You're going to marry a man who's been living on the streets. What could he possibly give you? You deserve so much more. Jane's heart ached at her mother's words, but she stood her ground. I love him, Mom, she said firmly. And that's all that matters. Her mother wasn't convinced. She believed Jane was making a mistake, and she made no effort to hide her disappointment. Jane's friends were no better. They whispered behind her back, making jokes about her rescue project, and wondering how long it would take before she came to her senses. But Jane didn't care. She knew what she wanted, and she wasn't going to let anyone change her mind. Tom, for his part, felt the weight of their disapproval. He knew he wasn't what they had imagined for Jane that he had seen the looks on their faces, the way they had sneered at him when Jane wasn't looking. He had heard the whispers, the jokes, the disbelief. And it hurt. But Jane's love gave him strength. With her by his side, he felt like he could face anything. A few months later, Jane and Tom decided to get married that IT wasn't a grand affair. There, just a small ceremony with a few close friends. Jane didn't invite her parents. She knew they wouldn't approve, and she didn't want their negativity to ruin what should be the happiest day of her life. Instead, she and Tom exchanged vows in a quiet park, 
the place where they had first met. It was simple, but it was perfect. Jane's parents found out about the wedding a few days later, when a wedding announcement arrived in their mailbox. Her mother was furious, calling Jane immediately to demand an explanation. How could you marry him without telling U.S.? Her mother's voice was sharp with anger, disbelief evident in every word. You're throwing your life away for a man who has nothing. But Jane remained calm. I didn't want the negativity, Mom, she said simply. I love Tom, and I didn't want you or anyone else to ruin our day. Her mother's silence on the other end of the line was deafening. After a long pause, she finally spoke, her tone cold and distant. If that's how you feel, then I guess you've made your choice. Don't expect any help from us that you're on your own. A few days later, Jane received a text from her mother that broke her heart. We've decided to cut you out of our will. You've chosen a man who is only with you for your money. And we can't support that decision. You're no longer part of this family. Jane was devastated. She had always been close to her parents, especially her father, her. To be cut off from them, not just financially but emotionally, was a blow she hadn't expected. She cried for days, feeling the weight of their disapproval pressing down on her. Tom tried to comfort her but deep down, he felt guilty. He wondered if he was the reason for the rift between Jane and her family. If he hadn't come into her life, would things have been different? What Jane didn't know was that her father had no idea about the message her mother had sent. He had never wanted to cut her off. In fact, he was heartbroken, thinking that Jane had chosen to distance herself from them. Desperate to understand what had happened, Jane's father hired a private investigator to look into her life. He wanted to know if she was okay, if she was happy, the investigator reported back that Jane and Tom were doing well. They lived a quiet, content life. And despite the estrangement from her family, Jane seemed at peace. It was only when Jane became pregnant that her father decided to reach out. He sent her a letter, along with a bouquet of flowers and a small teddy bear for the baby. My darling Jane, the letter began that I'm sorry for whatever I've done to push you away. I've missed you every day, and I hope you can forgive me. I want to be a part of your life again, and a part of my grandchild's life. Please, let's put the past behind us. Jane was surprised when she received the letter. Her. She hadn't expected her father to reach out, especially after the way her mother had treated her, she read the letter over and over, her emotions a whirlwind of confusion, anger, and sadness. How could he act like nothing had happened? Didn't he realize how much their rejection had hurt her? But then she remembered her father's kind heart, the way he had always been the one to bridge gaps and mend fences, maybe, just maybe, he hadn't known about the hurtful messages her mother had sent. Curiosity got the better of her, and she decided to meet her father. They arranged to meet at a small cafe, away from prying eyes and judgmental voices. When Jane saw her father for the first time in years, her heart ached. He looked older, wearier, and she realized just how much time they had lost, they hugged, both of them holding back tears, and sat down to talk. As they spoke, Jane's father confessed that he had no idea about the messages her mother had sent. He had never wanted to cut her off. All this time, he thought she had chosen to walk away from them. Him. Your mother. She's always been stubborn, he said, his voice thick with emotion, but I never wanted this. I never wanted to lose you. Jane listened, her heart softening. She realized that her father had been as much a victim of her mother's manipulation as she had. They spent hours talking, catching up on everything they had missed. Jane told him about her pregnancy, about the life she and Tom had built together and for the first time in a long time, she felt like she had her father back. But the reconciliation wasn't complete. 
Jane's mother had come with her father to the café, insisting on being part of the conversation. Jane wasn't ready to forgive her yet. The wounds were too deep, the pain too raw, but her father's presence, his love, and his willingness to make things right gave Jane hope, maybe in time she could forgive her mother too, but for now she was content to have her father back in her life. As the months passed, Jane's relationship with her father grew stronger. He was there for the birth of her child, and though her mother wasn't, Jane felt at peace with the decision. She had learned that family isn't just about blood, it's about the people who love and support you, no matter what, and with Tom by her side, she knew she had everything she needed. 